titled Hanover, and uh, it is yet another day. And we are powering your future with the Ministry of Mines and Energy. Now, our topic for today, like I mentioned earlier, is uh, on geological agriculture, a term you might have heard, but you're not quite too sure what it entails. Uh, But I can tell you that it is a study and application cultivating seeds to maturity in geographical formations. Okay, that could be rocks without the use of soils and fertilizers. And this can be done indoors or even outdoors permanently. But that's just a little bit of what I know. I've got somebody in studio who will definitely give us that is the depth of this particular theme for today. And joining me in studio is Miss Inge Bidi, who is the, uh, she's a geoscientist at the Ministry of Mines and Energy. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. We have quite a chat, and I think just to get everybody on board, what is geo-agriculture? Okay, geo-agriculture is just an aspect of uh, geology studying rocks and minerals okay. of a value in agriculture, which can be used as fertilizers and soil neutralizers so nice. that we can uh, grow our crops and plants uh, uh, yeah, to maturity or to full potential to okay. growth. Mm. What we're talking about is uh, a geologist. Mm-hmm. Uh, geologists usually normally study all types of rocks. But okay. now when we when we take that part of the geo-egg, mm. we are now looking at just the rocks that have, uh, uh, that have the um, nit- nitrogen, okay. phosphorus, and the potassium, as well as now uh, the soil neutralizers. Okay. Like, for instance, when you go to... To what is the shop where you buy your fertilizers from? Okay, okay, the, uh, it's also running out. Yeah. But yes, I, <laughs> yeah, I see the, the place you're talking about. Yeah, that one. You go buy fertilizers. Mm-hmm. But if I mean, you we've read, also got Ferreira's garden here. Yeah, with, yeah, Ferreira garden. That. Yeah. When you read at, at the contents there, mm. you are basically trying to enrich the soil with the NPK. Yeah. With the NPK, which the uh, plants are able to new, to to absorb, okay. when you feed the soil with it, mm-hmm. and then they grow. Mm. So now, the this this um, NPK, yeah. th- these are elements, right? Nitrogen, uh, potassium, potassium, and phosphorus. Mm. They actually come from rocks. Okay. And now, in your ge- egg, the geologist is studying just those rocks oh. that have those. Nice. I'm curious. Can this be practiced in Namibia? If so, where in the country can we practice this? <laughs> yeah, Joe Egg, you defined very well in the beginning mm. that here the we're just trying to introduce um, an aspect whereby instead of now processing the rocks that have the NPK mm. and the neutralizers, yeah. such as the sulfate, you now just crush the rock mm-hmm. to a certain uh, to a, a certain grain size okay. and then you can now just throw your your seeds mm-hmm. on there and then you just water oh. and then by watering the rocks these crushed rocks mm-hmm. they are able now to diffuse they're able to release these mm-hmm. uh, nutrients the npk and then the plant is uh, can actually absorb it oh. so it can be practiced everywhere Okay. Everywhere you have the rocks that have the NPK, you can mm-hmm. just crush and then you can, it can be practiced everywhere. And mm. the good thing is you can practice it with the in, indoor. It's mostly introduced, uh, being practiced, introduced by the uh, Americans okay. who are trying to do, to do the, to, to grow these crops in the urban areas. Mm. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. That is now the good uh, part of it. We're trying to introduce it to the urban areas so that everybody in your yeah. house, you should be able to grow your tomatoes. Your, you're just a basic. Talking about that, I actually want to get to that question because I'm pretty sure my listeners tuned in and they're like, aha, oh, so anywhere we can actually do this. Now, when we speak about this being able to be practiced anywhere, um, I think the next best question really becomes what crops can then be grown through this process and what's the benefit? Okay, let me just share a case study that we have contacted okay. last year. The mid of last year, mm-hmm. we um, we we had uh, together with my colleagues in the Ministry of Mines and Energy, yeah. we had demonstrations mm-hmm. of this, whereby we, I, the geologist, alert the, the 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 sampling of these rocks that have the NPK. We weren't even even at the. But as a rims, a rims, a rims, uh, this paint thing, perlin paint. Okay, yeah? perlin yeah? paint. Yeah, okay. at, at the quarries, because mm-hmm. the target is actually to make use of the, 
of the waste that are coming from the mines. You know, okay. the mines okay. are leaving are leaving lots of um, crushed rocks, okay. but these rocks are useful. They have these uh, mm. uh, elements. So we we visited uh, like those uh, mines. Okay. It can be abandoned. It can be just those ones that uh, they they just left the those rocks that they feel that they are uh, mm. of no use to yeah. them. Yeah. So we had these demonstrations at the Ministry of Mines and Energy mm-hmm. where we grew. We we took the beans. Mm-hmm. We took the sorghum, we took the okay. mahangu, and these seeds we, we got from the agro board okay. yeah, of Namibia. Yeah. They are seeds from here. So mm. we demonstrated that and then um, people were, my colleagues were fascinated. Everybody had a container uh-huh. where where we put uh, rocks for them and then okay. they had to, to choose a seed of their choice, choice. Okay. and then they threw in there and then they watched. What is fascinating is that you will see this, they I don't know if it grows faster or it's just that you can witness that process. Mm. Like in day two, you will be able to see it how these, sprouts. It, yeah, the sprouting. Ah. Yeah. And, and then you're like, oh, it grows faster than <laughs> planting in the soil. But perhaps it's just that you cannot see when you, mm. when you bury the seed. Okay. Yeah, but we have demonstrated this mm-hmm. and uh, any crop actually you can plant. Okay. It just depends on how th- uh, the thickness, especially the, 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 the crops that uh, have uh, roots, Mm-hmm. The roots are not so big, yeah. but it just depends on the bed that you're laying. Mm. These demonstrations we've made in containers, but okay. you can as well lay a bed and okay. then you can grow your spinach, your mm. tomatoes, whatever you can dream of. Well, I know you were thinking about that question and now you have an idea as to what you might be growing. This is Powering Off You Talk with the Ministry of Mines and Energy and in studio with us is Miss Inga Bidi, making sure that you know everything around geo-agriculture and of course this fascinating process where you can actually witness, um, you know, whatever you see this, even in a small space like a container. But of course, the bigger picture would be that you're looking at your garden right now and you're thinking, aha, she said this can actually be practiced anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world. So maybe I should um, explore it. Nonetheless, we are getting into a whole lot more in a bit. She's actually uh, undertaking a project And she'll be telling us a little bit more about that. And also, we'll be looking at how Namibia can scale up uh, geological agriculture going forward. Keep it locked. Namibia's energy future is bright, driven by innovation and our commitment to sustainability. At the Ministry of Mines and Energy, we ensure affordable and reliable security of energy supply. With goals anchored on renewable energy and diversifying our energy sources, we're building a resilient future focused on harnessing the power of nature. From our cities to the most remote villages, powering industries, uplifting communities and fostering economic growth. Harnessing our resources, powering our future. It's the Nell Jones with that gem, but the conversation's happening off air, but we want to bring it back on air because that's what this is all about. We are powering, that is, uh, our future with the Ministry of Mines and Energy. And in studio, we have Miss Inge Bidi, who is a geoscientist at the Ministry of Mines and Energy, highlighting today's topic on uh, geological agriculture. Now, earlier we spoke about what geoagriculture is. If you missed out on that, it is basically really the study and application uh, cultivating seeds to maturity in geographical uh, formations. These are then your rocks without the use of soils and fertilizers. And uh, this can then be done, you know, either indoors or even outdoors and it's permanently. That's that's what you got to know, right? Um, but then there's also a project, Miss Inga, that you're working on. Can you share a little bit about that particular project uh, that you're currently undertaking on geological agriculture? Okay. The project, I've actually started it last year. Okay. Yeah, we've worked in we've worked on it with my intern. The project is basically trying now to extend, to assess and evaluate mm. how we can maximize or apply mm-hmm. the geo egg throughout the country. Okay. What we're trying to look at is we are trying to identify the rocks that have NPK. Mm-hmm. We've categorized. We have five categories practically. Okay. We have uh, rocks that have uh, N. That mm-hmm. is the nit- nitrates. Okay. Then we have the P. That's a phosphate. Phosphorus. Then we have the K. That's a potassium. potassium. And then we made a group for neutralizers. This is now where you will find like the 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 cal the calcites and the gypsums. Okay. Those ones that can basically just neutralize the pH, reduce mm. the acidity, and make it conducive to grow your crops. Okay. And then we also now added uh, from our experience from the demonstrations, we added now a group of uh, the old rocks 
Okay, mm. it might sound like we are hallucinating, <laughs> but we in this country have actually, uh, Rock said, uh, about 2.6 billion. So we added those okay. because they they disintegrate easily. When you water it, it releases mm-hmm. these uh, en- uh, the elements into water faster. Oh. So the project now, we're, we're trying now to find where are these rocks throughout the country so okay. that everybody should be able to just uh, be able to locate this rock mm-hmm. and crush it and apply it. Regardless, it does not just have to be in Wintook. The demonstrations were done for Wintook, but we want now to extend countrywide. that countrywide. Nice. It looks project. like uh, this is another class I'm absolutely loving. If you've got green hands, I know you're also very tuned in with your volume nice and loud. But if you're also a little like me, my mom is very green hands. Like I am using my ears, I'm borrowing my ears to actually her a little later today. But also, um, when we look at upscaling, um, Geological agriculture. How can we do this, um, you know, for Namibia going forward? Yeah, going forward, after the project, we we want to bring the geo egg to the community, to okay. you, to everybody, mm-hmm. nationwide. Going forward, after probably now the completion of this project, because mm. we do not just have to find where they are and describe them probably how they look like. So the, you, you, the layperson, mm. might. Okay, with our assistance in most cases, be yeah. able to identify. Yeah. We would also like now to test like the geochemistry, the concentration of these elements in this rock. Mm. So we will need a laboratory analysis. Okay. And then we will need to do a little test like to see like uh, the demonstrations that we've done in the Ministry of Science and Energy. Yeah. We actually grew and then we harvested the leaves to see if are they, are these plants um, actually absorbing these uh, nutrients in way excess that is uh, harmful to human con- uh, to uh, human so health. So the health or, aspect yes, as the well. The health aspect have to be assessed actually. Nice. And the ones that we've done actually the, uh, the results came out and mm-hmm. they were okay. They okay. were within the thresholds that are that are consumable Mm -hmm. to the human. So going forward, we would just like to establish now the... These 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 loca- localities, mm-hmm. the region, and we would like now to see everybody partaking. We would like to see more greens. I'm we excited like for this one. Backyard. Uh, we we are not going to take any excuses. Whether yeah. you're living in town, whether <laughs> in the studio, I expect to find actually a planned. Yeah, because it's not. It's 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 very the the soil is the one that makes uh, the table dirty. But mm. if you just have a rock, it's yeah. just releasing the water. Okay. Have everywhere. Mm. Grow your plants in your backyard. Grow even just the the. the the, the your 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 vegetables mm. just something so that you don't have to be going to the to the shop for everything and yeah. also we would like to now see uh, these aspect uh, these this idea being practiced you you should now actually decrease you should be able to save on the fertilizer on spreading of the fertilizers because this is now um, natural mm. uh, organic yeah you see we want you to live a healthy life mm. going forward we would like you to grow your organic vegetables vegetables and everything so 100%. that you remain healthy for us. A good contribution that is for, you know, sustainability, especially when we speak about, uh, you know, just being a country that can also, um, you know, in the long run, produce its own and this is a really really thrilling and exciting thing for me especially and i'm pretty sure for you too very fascinating to learn that mm, don't worry about the soil and the fertilizer we just need those npk rocks and we can actually uh, be sure to you know have our crops or our vegetables or you know so starting with a seedling and you're able to then reap what you soak right miss uh, biddy we gotta say goodbye to you any final words uh, final words is just pretty much to say that a geo egg is a real thing. Mm. You can actually grow crops or whatever you want to grow mm-hmm. in rocks without okay. any need need of um, of the soil. Mm. This is organic. These rocks are everywhere. You are stepping them every every day, on them every day. Those yeah. you those of you who work uh, who walk on on, on uh, who, who live in uh, uh, in places with mountains. Yeah. If, especially here in Winter, we mm. tested the most common rock, and the uh, the crops thrived in them. Nice. So, 
going forward mm -hmm. please uh watch out for the for the geo for the npk in the npk we mm -hmm. we target the ministry of mines and energy actually targets to uh, to publish a booklet nice the Looking npk to that. booklet and then you should uh actually um come to us and mm. ask ask us or, or we will communicate when it's published and then you will be able to approach this institution mm. f for you to practice All right. yeah it is very it's a very good aspect please uh practice even if you just have to test without knowing just crush a rock and yeah. put it put it in a container for mm -hmm. now and then see throw a seed mm -hmm. of, of, of your of your choice and mm. see if uh, a crop grows or not all right well there you have it we're powering um our future with the ministry of mines and energy very exciting concept geo agriculture where of course you can forget about the use of soils and fertilizers and think about your seeds maturing in geographical formations that's the rocks referred to as npks how fascinating well catch us next week and we've got a lot more thrilling, exciting, and of course, um, insightful uh, topics that are coming through from the Ministry of Mines and Energy.